it's difficult to reconcile what happened with my Josie, role. It's quite negligent, all right? He didn't suffer the stroke because of the way he conducted the procedure. Take the case. Okay? Right. Uh, neither of you are working today, are you? You're here to look after Lord Burn. Is that right? No, I suggest you go and do that. And you, madam, if you want to pick a fight, do it elsewhere, not on my ward. Connie! My sweet. How are you doing, Joseph? I'm sorry to burst in on you like this. We have a bit of a bed so crisis. So sorry no, about this. Just one moment. We have a high security prisoner. A lifer. A, a, a lifer who obviously has to be kept separate from the other patients. And since Darwin has requisitioned what? this private room. Excuse me. Wait, wait, so you want to put a lifer in here with my father? Really, Joseph, don't worry yeah. about this because I have already told you no. Okay? And what do you suggest? Do you know what? It's not my problem. You want to say that to the CEO? Yeah. Absolutely. We'll are in. Anyway, if this is that big cock-up, why are you so keen to sort it out? What's in it for you? Connie, you're so cynical. I don't need preferential treatment. I'll be perfectly happy on Darwin. That's what I thought you'd say. No, Thank you. Do you two always wash your dirty linen in public or am I a special case, hmm? Sorry about that, Charles. Well, there's every chance of a full recovery. Just as long as he avoids stressful situations. Won't be a scene, I promise. Anyway, I'm in town all day. So I'll be on my mobile. Okay. Mm -hmm. What? I've been suspended. Two weeks. No. No. For failing to attend a racial awareness course. And Maddie? The same. What are you, uh, what are you going to do? Consider my position. Oh, oh come on. no, Elliot. I mean, really, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Think of it as, I don't know, two weeks off. And a stain on my character. This is a whitewashed Connie, if that isn't a racist expression. So I didn't attend the course, so you know why I couldn't go. No, the real problem lies with the original hearing, why I was convicted in the first place. Why was that? Look, if this is something to do with my father, I'm... Is it? It transpires that the disciplinary committee received two letters in support of Tandy's accusation. One, One of which was Rick Griffin, of course. Which makes sense. But the other was from... My father. Quite, which seems to make no sense at all. But there's a rumour that a deal was done. Between? Elliot? I believe Ms Naylor wants the Keller consultancy. Clifford won't entertain it. So that leaves Mr Griffin. Is he backing her? I don't know. It's what we call a stitch-up. I'm afraid we're all victims of Ms. Naylor's unrestrained ambition. Perhaps you'll excuse me. You know, Elliot's been suspended for not attending the racial awareness course. I'm sorry to hear that. Huh? He's upset, naturally. He wanted to resign just a minute ago, but I think we've weathered that one. So? I think you need to know what everyone else does. <laughs> Elliot is taking the flat for something he didn't do. He didn't have a go at Tandy because she's from Nigeria or wherever. She made the accusations to hide her incompetence. No. No way. Why not go straight to the board? I think everyone assumed that the board would see sense, um, but my father's intervention scuppered that. Tandy has nothing to hide. Oh, really? Then why make a deal? Tandy got Lord Byrne's support in the disciplinary hearing, and in return, you support Jack for the consultancy. It's not very ethical, Rick. There was no deal. So that's what my father said. And he lied. Come. Um, Mr. Clifford. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> There's a slot available now in theatre for John Kitto. Thanks, Dan. So presumably I'm a liar too, am I? Is that what you're saying? Is it? I didn't mean to cause trouble here. No. <laughs> Goes around, comes around. You want to square things with Ms. Naylor and you do right. Play her at her own game. What is this? What the hell is going on? Anyway. Uh, why don't you come and assist me, Rick? Assist on what? With Kitto. Which pulmonary embolism. Gonna diagnose that a thing or that a scan. So, uh, where do we go from here? Mr. Strachan? Heparin and thrombolytics to break down the clot. It's risky so soon after a stroke, I think. So is an embolectomy. Yeah, there are other options, thank you. Such as what? Surgery? I don't think so, do you? After a stroke? This isn't your call. And, uh... Neither is it yours. Mm, division in the ranks. No man's land. Okay. We'll increase the odds. 
Then tests permitting, we'll go with the thrombolytics. OK. Heparin and TPA, quickly as we can, please. We should be... We're into surgery, Charles. No, I'm afraid there's no other option. Well, just 75% in my favour. We'll be fine. I'll make the necessary arrangements. Is it a mask? Oh, yeah, it's not an option. Must have been a Mr Clifford's work yesterday for paid to that. Yeah, so our turns not to be the ones to lose him. Oh, thanks for that. Really, no pressure. You joining us, Mr. Bell? To observe, if that's... Good, to observe, that's fine. Keep us on our toes. All right, there it is, you see? From the arteries to it. Yeah, that's where the strong is. Three of her knees, please. Can you get to it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can. I need the person. BP's dropping 60 over. Okay, thank you. Have you got it? That's a large embolus. Oh. Okay. Blood pressure's coming up. 110 over 70. Great. Happy. All right. I'll check with Dr. Carl. Uh, meanwhile, let's keep him on the anticoagulation treatment. You can close up, Mrs. Stratton. Everything went well. I've removed the embolism and we would just have to wait until he's conscious to know if there's any lasting damage. Thank you. Okay. Charles? Paige, my son. Oh, excuse me. Okay, crush Charlie, please. You've made me lose my father. Me. Clear. <laughs> no, right, more adrenaline, come on. <laughs> OK, let's do another round. Charge to 360, please. OK. Clear. Okay, and again. Dad? 